Hello and welcome to Rock Paper Shotgun. You're watching episode 3 of Can We Build It? RPS is a PC gaming channel and I'm a Sims 4 fanatic, so I've kind of mushed them together to build famous PC gaming locations in The Sims 4. My most recent build was Trevor's trailer from GTA 5, which you can check out right now by clicking the card that's popping up on screen. And today's is something completely different. To mark the release of Half-Life Alex, I'll be building Dr. Kleiner's lab from Half-Life 2, the cluttered workspace where Gordon Freeman gets his Mark V hazardous environment suit. It's completely different to my previous two builds, and this one uses absolutely no custom content, so it'll be super easy to download from the gallery, especially if you're on console. Let's see how I get on. Rise and shine, Mr. Freeman. There's probably not much crossover between The Sims and Half-Life 2, though your Sims can don this beautiful hazmat suit if you have Strangerville and pretend they're Gordon Freeman. There are no head crabs, but there are a lot of crates, and if there's one thing Half-Life 2 likes, it's crates. As you'll see when you watch this video, there's a lot of crates. The lab in Half-Life 2 looks pretty easy to recreate at first, but there's a pretty snazzy vent system that goes overhead, and there's also a fair amount of tech. But also due to the age of the game, there's not much clutter. And as you may have seen from previous Can We Build It's, I love clutter. This lack of clutter made it much, much easier to complete. I'm not sure Gordon and his friends are big into interior design. It seems to me that Dr. Kleiner has put pretty much zero effort into the whole lab, minus a few rugs and a picture that's actually a secret switch. But the aim of this series is to recreate famous gaming locations, not to make them better. Though I wouldn't mind giving this place a once over like they do on 60 Minute Makeover, those things must take longer than 60 minutes, surely. Paint doesn't even dry in 60 minutes. And having that many people in one tiny space all at once? Nothing really adds up in the entire series. Anyway, before I go too off topic, I suppose it's time to show you the whole process. I decided to make the whole thing, including the secret room at the back, which isn't really that secret as there's a whole door showing that something is clearly there, but I mean, whatever. The whole thing has been made and it ended up being three stories tall. Should I have just made the lot with the tallest walls? I considered it, but I needed to have a bit of building room to create the little balconies and also the ventilation system. Three stories was definitely the best way to go about this build. As there's no custom content, or CC as it's more commonly known, I'll be explaining how I managed to make everything look the way it does. I used a few cheats, move objects, show live edit objects, show hidden objects and ignore gameplay unlock entitlements. For those who don't know, move objects allows you to place items off grid and in places they shouldn't go, as normally in The Sims you have to abide by their building rules and have everything to a fixed position. Live edit objects are the objects you see around various sim worlds that are not in the catalogue, things like billboards, broken fencing, buildings and some foliage. Hidden objects are debug items, that's how I managed to get my sim her hazmat suit without her actually doing any of the stranger requests, and tend to be things like toothbrushes, collectibles and other things sims either learn or pull out of their pockets but aren't available in the catalogue. Ignoring gameplay unlock entitlements means you have access to items that are locked behind various career progressions in the game, meaning you can get things like desk fans, briefcases or other career specific items. I'll level with you. Originally I was only going to make the main lab and the room where the suit is, so you'll see me focus on that first and then move on to the teleportation room afterwards. One thing may shock you, if you're a Sims player, because it shocked me was using these Moschino stuff windows. I thought that pack was going to be pretty useless, but the windows are pretty much identical to what you see in game. I also like using windows to figure out just how big a build should be. For example, seeing four windows in Half-Life 2 with space either side helps you figure out the size of the building in The Sims. I had to rejig it a fair amount to make it all fit and look proper. Some of you may be thinking, but if the move object cheats lets you place things off grid, why do the windows have to comply too? Well, that's a question I've been asking myself for a very long time. But windows, doors and walls all have to be on the grid. And no, there are no half length walls either. Sometimes this leads to making houses way bigger than they look on a floor plan, if you follow a floor plan, and it's a bit hard to furnish. Luckily for this build, I knew I was building a massive f off laboratory, and so just accepted my fate. I used a pool ladder for the ladder going up to the balcony, because newsflash, we don't have ladders yet, and yes, it's only half length, so yes, you'd have to jump to try and make it up there, but there's no harm in getting a few cheeky pull-ups in to get that upper body strength up. If this build was coated in CC, I had the best wooden planks to put over the windows to make them match the game properly, and I also had a good ladder to use too. But I wanted a new challenge, and this is how I adapted. 
If you want to watch a really CC heavy build, check out the previous episode where I built Trevor's trailer from GTA 5, or the first episode where I recreated the twins room from what remains of Edith Finch. The lighting in this build needed to be a little bit higher than the first floor, but a little bit lower than the top floor, so I had to build a temporary floor to get these lights in the right place. It sped up and cut down, but let me assure you, it was a massive palaver. I then moved on to the entry to the lab, which is of course secret and hidden behind a fake vending machine. It doesn't seem massively secure, but it must have worked so far. Imagine getting annoyed at a vending machine, whacking it a few times and it opening up to a secret lab. This isn't to encourage anyone to whack every vending machine they see, by the way, but I suppose one or two wouldn't hurt. So, to mimic this, I used a couple of vending machines from Cats and Dogs, meant to hold medical supplies, but, I mean, this is fine. Just don't expect a Pepsi Max. I just kept one of them a bit further forwards, so Sims can still move about. Not that there's any actual entrance to this place, but you're obviously welcome to put your own door in, or just shift click and teleport them in. The light I used above this entryway is pretty much identical to the one in Half-Life 2, but it's the wrong way around, and sadly The Sims doesn't have any way of rotating items on an axis. Looks at Planet Coaster and Planet Zoo wistfully. So it will have to do. For the walls and flooring, I chose basic bricks and tiling and put it throughout, and then changed the flooring in the suit room to match the game properly. In Half-Life 2, there's a little bit of breakage in the repetition, however the texture repetition is very obvious, but like I said before, this is just using what is available in-game, so it's a lot harder to make it look identical to Half-Life 2. There are of course scratches and various wall effects to use from the Vampire's pack, but it doesn't quite match the vibe of the lab. And then this is where you can see me get literally anything out of the debug menu that I thought may be necessary to the build. It's really hard to refine things in the debug menu as most things are unnamed, so when I see something I think I'll need, I grab it. To flesh out the inside, I started to look for pillars that would work in the corners of the room. It was hard to find the right kind of thing. Stone wasn't what I was looking for, but it looked closer to the pillars in-game. I used this upscale Nutcracker statue in place of Gordon's suit for the time being, as my plan was to use the hazmat suit. But it turns out Sims have to actually be wearing it for you to see it properly. Damn it. For the pillars, I eventually found some great drain pipes that ended up working perfectly when scaled up. For those on PC, you can scale items up and down using the square brackets on your keyboard, so I placed these where they were needed. They were also named items, not debug items, so it was easy to use the eyedropper tool to find them again. For the two desks by the entrance, I wanted to use some bits from Strangerville. This pack was made for this build. What with the redacted science lab and all of its science labby things? The next important thing I placed was one of the rugs. Yes, very important here, the only thing that really has any character to this entire lab. But not very hygienic, surely. I toyed with making the desk unit up from scratch, but there aren't quite the right type of shelving units for it, unfortunately. It's quite hard to get tiny little TVs to look good on shelving units, and I thought the pre-made items would have less chance of balking themselves up in the future. I then added a mini fridge, which I later changed to a cabinet, as that's definitely more of what it's meant to be, but I struggled to find something that would work here and knew the fridge would have a slot on top for this stereo. What I love most about doing these builds is finding uses for objects I've overlooked in the past. For example, these two tables I've never even considered using for anything, but they worked so perfectly for this storage space between the desks, two side tables downsized to fit underneath, and boom! Who needs box storage custom content? I then put in the second desk that has an alien plant sample on, which I soon cover up with a cute little cactus as per Half-Life 2, and then start finishing this area off. With a light, a sized down filing cabinet below the desk, a shelving unit shrunk down to fit on top of the desk, switch out the mini fridge and start making the cable system above the desk on the right using various items from the debug catalogue. Moving on to the main bulk of the room, I placed down these large devices that are meant to cultivate plants, from Strangerville again, and place a desk, a recycling bin, it's just a blue bin but pretend with me, another rug and a shelving unit. I will level with you, I was most looking forward to these shelves, they are the most cluttered area in the whole room. I couldn't wait to make it look proper. I play around with this area a lot, slotting the TVs into place and figuring out how to make it look like there are PC towers on the floor, before realising there's game consoles in The Sims 4. Whoops! I use a downsized barrel, a picnic food cooler, and have to move the entire shelf unit out of the way to place the stereo. For some reason, this shelf lets objects like that click into place on the floor, but nowhere else. I don't know, your guess is as good as mine. I don't want to bend down to put on my sweet tunes. For the consoles next to the desk, I toyed with what to use, but ended up scaling down a few of these pillar consoles. 
Some of them when scaled down would have their lights not scaled down with them, so I covered this up with more consoles so you couldn't tell. It also was the easiest way of making it look like it does in game without using custom content. Whilst making this part of the lab, I noticed something that matched the wall device that charges Gordon's suit. I then place the games consoles down on the floor to make them look like computer towers and then go to place the actual computer on the desk, only, oh yeah. Computers have a very specific slot they're locked into on desks and tables, so here I use a little bit of ingenuity. I get a small desk, place it where I want the PC to go, through the existing desk and then scale it down and hide it among the objects underneath the desk, et voila! Put that PC wherever the hell you want it to go. And because The Sims don't have printers or shredders, I use the Roomba, sorry, the legally distinct robot vacuum as the shredder on the desk. To make the two big airlocky things at the back of the lab, I used a decoration called Fanciful Folly from Get Famous and scaled it up loads. I ended up needing to make two of these items, so it was good to get practice with the first. I then added loads of pipework to it to make it look more mechanical. Over on the far side of the building where the doors to the teleportation room are, I added some cork boards and some art to them, doing the old classic delete the wall behind it to stop it clipping through and hiding what you actually want on display trick. Then I put the wall back in place and added the Black Mesa lab group photo to the wall, only it's a picture of dogs having a dinner party. Close enough, right? Next it was time to flesh out the rest of the lab. I upscaled a pet carrier, which is for the wonderful pet head crab, and then added some lockers. Then I just went in and added shit loads of crates. Like, absolutely loads of them. There are so many crates in Half-Life 2. So many. I then went in and made the underneath of the balcony a little more fleshed out. It's a pretty neglected part of the lab, so this was quite easy to do. Whack a few desks in and then a few bookcases and Bob's your uncle. I downsized the shelving unit again and placed it on top of both desks to make the desks match a little better, and then put down a few ring binders and a top secret dossier on the shelves on the left hand desk too. The desk on the right needed a crate and another Roomba. It's actually one super long desk rather than a few small ones, so I fixed this by merging two long dining tables. Placing the computer for this space was a lot easier, as it just needed to sit in the middle. Easy peasy. And then there's more crates to go down. Loads more. <laughs> Look at them all. Everywhere. Then I added in a second mechanical watermacaller at the back of the lab, chucked a few more pipes in front of it, and then used a small fencing border to mimic the wire going across the laboratory. I then went in and added a few items of clutter to the back room where the suit is kept and then had a lot of fun recreating the weird system it has hooked up to it. This is where I knew I was no longer going to be able to use Mr Nutcracker and that his time in this build was coming to an end. In doing all of this, I found an industrial grade end cap that would look perfect in my weird vault things but wouldn't work on their own as they would scale up and be at a fixed height. I then went back and finished making this little room. I ended up using this Electroflux wormhole generator from Get to Work which works really well for this build. And in place of Mr Nutcracker, I put the Jazz Boss statue. If you're not sure what the heck Jazz Boss is, or who Jazz Boss is, please watch this livestream popping up in the corner of the screen now. And then I moved on to the ventilation system. I decided to not use the actual vents from the Sims 4 catalogue as they have feet. What's up with that? So I decided to use half walls to make a fake ventilation system. I think it turned out okay, but annoyingly you can't change the colour of the ceiling so it's all just very white when you look at it from below. I used two fake vent entries for the start and the end of the ventilation system and then got to work on making the beams that go across the building. I ummed and ahed about how to do this and ultimately would have preferred using fencing and the wall tool to do it, but nothing was close enough to how it needed to look. So I ended up using debug fencing. I'm not overly happy with how this turned out, but I think I made a good job of it. And then finally I move on to the back room. This was super easy to put together, most of what I had found I was able to use in here too. These tech desks turned out to be very useful and while I don't think Dr Kleiner will be going up there to make some sweet tunes, he can do so if he wishes. It's kind of the perfect space for a party. I use a sprinkler system, a spice rack, some more industrial end caps, some more piping, a test tube sized up and a few computer console units to finish this room off. And then I boxed everything in so that it's all technically indoors and won't make some items be lit like they're outdoors, a weird thing The Sims does. If any part of an item is outside, it gets lit like it's actually outside so it will often be lighter than other objects. Yeah, I don't know either. And then I added a few final touches. And here are the screenshots! I hope you've enjoyed seeing this space come to life. It was a fun but strange build to put together, oddly empty in places and overly cluttered in others. It was good to see it come together properly and I'm really happy with how the entrance to the lab looks. 
My favourite part about building in The Sims is making use of items in ways they weren't intended to be used. And whilst it doesn't look exactly like it does in game, it looks pretty close considering there is absolutely no custom content in here whatsoever. A new challenge for me, but a fun one and a much more accessible one too. Thanks for watching episode 3 of Can We Build It? If you liked what you saw today, why not like and subscribe to Rock Paper Shotgun so you don't miss future episodes or any of our other Sims videos. If you have any suggestions of what other locations you'd like to see me rebuild in The Sims 4, please do let me know in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching and hopefully see you again soon. I can't see that I'm wearing, I'm wearing a Sims top, especially for this. And you can't see.